Oh hi, so I like to watch sweaty men hug each other. I also like wrestling. WrestleMania 34 is this weekend. I know, I know, okay, I get it. It's weird for an adult to really be into people who pretend to fight each other. Not as weird as a friend of mine who has somebody pay him to wear shoes for what is apparently not, but absolutely has to be, sexual gratification. That is absolutely a true story, but not what this video is about. I've tried to make this video before. It's a part of myself that I intentionally hid from every online platform I was part of for many years. So if you want to tap out right now, I get it, but I think it'll be an interesting conversation. First, I'm going to take you through my first wrestling memory and why I fell in love with it, why that love deepened and then faded away, and then raged back into prominence. I'm using a lot of different words there that mean that I'll probably have to make this video not safe for work. I was five years old, laying on the couch, cuddled against my mom. It was a warm and cozy scene, except for one thing. The mega powers were exploding before my eyes and I was devastated. For those of you, probably most of you, who don't know, the mega powers were a tag team of Hulk Hogan and Randy Macho Man Savage, probably two of the biggest, if not the two most famous wrestlers of the late 80s. There had been miscommunications for weeks between these two egos, but it came to a head when Miss Elizabeth, Savage's girlfriend, was knocked unconscious at ringside. Hulk, being the eternal gentleman, carried her to the back, leaving his partner all alone in the ring. After the match, Savage was furious and attacked Hogan and insulted his intentions. So yes, the claims that wrestling is nothing more than a male soap opera might be very true for a young boy who, probably through some type of testosterone osmosis, already knew who all these wrestlers were in their backstories. This was devastating. There is a clear similarity between wrestlers and superheroes. Both are these larger than life personalities. Everything is ratcheted up to 11. The spectacle and the intensity are what first drew me to this combination of sport and entertainment. I mean, there's no better example than when The Undertaker locked the ultimate warrior into a casket. They made it seem like he was suffocating and would surely die if he wasn't rescued in time. I remember fighting back tears as a young kid. In the 80s and for decades before that, wrestling had a specific format in North America. It didn't really matter the organization or federation. There were good guys called faces and bad guys called heels. Often there would be a storyline that would cause a good guy to go bad or vice versa, but each match was a blow off of some sort of feud that involved a good guy battling a bad guy. And if you can remember, the 1980s was a good decade for wrestling. Vince McMahon had his WWF go national. Instead of staying in a regional format, which wrestling had done for a few decades, wrestling was popular. Hulk Hogan was a household name, and wrestling events were making serious cash. By 1993, that was evaporating. Hogan was interested more in making movies, something he probably should be labeled a domestic terrorist for, but people's excitement was waning. Nobody was coming in to fill Hogan's shoes, and I think the most important reason, audiences were becoming less enthusiastic about simple good versus bad storylines. I remember still watching wrestling during this period. It was rough. I still loved so much about it, but looking back, there's not a whole lot of good to be had. The situation was pretty dire. But what can happen when your back is against the wall is you start to innovate, which is why Vince McMahon opened up an edition of Monday Night Raw, their weekly TV program, by saying this. It has been said that anything can happen here in the World Wrestling Federation, but now more than ever, truer words have never been spoken. This is a conscious effort on our part to open the creative envelope, so to speak, in order to entertain you in a more contemporary manner. Even though we call ourselves sports entertainment because of the athleticism involved, the key word in that phrase is entertainment. The WWF extends far beyond the strict confines of sports presentation into the wide open environment of broad-based entertainment. We borrow from such program niches like soap operas like The Days of Our Lives, or music videos such as those on MTV, daytime talk shows like Jerry Springer and others, cartoons like The King of the Hill on Fox, sitcoms like Seinfeld, and other widely accepted forms of television entertainment. We in the WWF think that you, the audience, are quite frankly tired of having your intelligence insulted. We also think you're tired of the same old simplistic theory of good guys versus bad guys. Surely the era of the superhero urge you to say your prayers and take your vitamins is definitely 
passe. This was the beginning of what is known as the Attitude Era. The Attitude Era came at just the right time. I was hitting puberty. I was feeling like nobody understood me. I had my own personal 24-hour sundial. Guys will know what I mean. And here was one of the things I liked the most, representing a more grittier and adult tone. This was exemplified with Stone Cold Steve Austin. He swore, he flipped his boss off, and he didn't care who liked him and who didn't. It also marked the use of blood. Now, blood had been used in different wrestling organizations for decades, but except for mistakes, blood really wasn't seen in the WWF in the 80s at all. Now, all of a sudden, people were being busted open left and right. It was violent, it was visceral, and it pulled me in even further. The idea of live performance has always excited me. It's partly why I enjoy theater so much. There's no safety net, no trying it a second time. Wrestling is essentially theater in the round. The stage is in the center of a gaggle of people. And the athleticism is a mixture of Cirque du Soleil and hand-to-hand -hand combat. It truly is a unique art form. However, there are storylines, and it wouldn't really matter all that much if there was all this stuff I've already talked about, if there wasn't something that kept drawing me back in week to week. What ties wrestling to things like comic books or soap operas is that this is a story that doesn't really ever end. Wrestlers disappear and sometimes return, there can be false starts and injuries that delay things, but the show must go on. There's also something that is truly unique to wrestling, which is when it blends reality with fiction. It already has people pretend to beat on each other, but then there are also storylines which reference things happening backstage, which could be partly true. Like the time when Lita, a female wrestler, was dating Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy was good friends with another wrestler named Edge. In real life, Lita and Edge started messing around with each other behind Matt's back. When that was discovered, of course, Lita and Matt broke up, but then they used that as a storyline where Matt would have to interact with his former friend and former girlfriend and relive the painful mess of the breakup, which is just all kinds of messed up. When I went off to university, I just became busy with schoolwork that wrestling sort of took a back seat. Plus, I was embarrassed to bring it up with the new friends I was making, but it was a good decade before I was drawn back in. I would dip in every now and again to see what was going on. I might have even watched the occasional WrestleMania, but I was certainly not watching week to week. And I should mention that while I knew about other wrestling organizations, I really only paid attention to the ones in the United States and Canada. But there is a deep history of Mexican wrestling called Lucha Libre. There was shoot wrestling leagues in other countries where people were actually fighting each other. And then there were also comedy wrestling organizations, which is an art unto itself. But what really pulled me back in was NJPW, New Japan Pro Wrestling. It looked something like this. <laughs> It kind of blew my mind. There were slightly different rules and customs, but overall it was pretty similar to American wrestling, just with more brutal kicks. I only watched it because there was an English commentary provided by an announcer I loved, but it drew me in and has made me rabid to know more about the history of Pureso. I probably butchered that, but that's professional wrestling in Japan. They don't have weekly shows and their storylines may not be as intricate, but they tell stories through action in the ring, something that occasionally happens in North America, but definitely not as much. As for the WWF, now the WWE, I still don't watch week to week. I just don't have the time, but I read the reports on what's going on, watch a couple of YouTube videos, and then watch each pay-per-view that comes out each month. For those few hours, I feel like I'm curled up next to my mom, watching the mega powers explode. I don't think I've changed anyone's mind, but wrestling is a unique way to tell stories and it's much more than teen boy entertainment, or at least it can be. But what do you think? Have you ever watched wrestling? When did you stop? Would you ever go back? Would you be able to put me into the figure four leg lock? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kyle. I upload videos every Monday and Thursday. You can do all the normal YouTube things to this video. You do have my consent. And if you'd like to help me make even better videos, consider becoming my Patreon supporter for as little as a dollar per month. And if you didn't like this, then I suggest we settle our differences this Sunday in a 15 foot high steel cage. I'll listen to your complaints politely and we'll come to a cordial agreement.